Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samad, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do a badass gothic makeover in Photoshop. We'll be covering realistic skin lightening, lip darkening and eyeshadow effects, all without washing out the skin and poor details below. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. Okay, so before we kick into the main techniques of this video, we're just going to do a quick Photoshop breakdown going through the layers of the PSD document. Um, first off, one of the main things I say to everyone and that I preach about is using references and mood boards. So I've done a dedicated tutorial video based on just this. So if you're not familiar with mood boards, there's a link down in the description below. But mood boards really give you a point of reference. I'm not a makeup or hair artist, so I needed to look at these reference images in order to create this piece. So this is how the image started out. Uh, I chose to use a plain looking model with minimal makeup that would be a good base and show the contrast of the before and after. Now when you're doing these types of processes it's really important that you use very high resolution stock images so if you tried doing this on one of your own selfies off a camera phone if the quality isn't studio production quality then you may not get the greatest results you need to have all of those pores and details in the skin that will typically come from uh, a studio lit professional photograph so for the purpose of this I used Adobe stock for most of the elements because I know the quality there is good okay so now we got that out of the way this layer group here to the right called masks this is where the majority of the action happens so these are selection layers this is a way that I really like working if you've seen my other tutorials you know how much I love this um, some of them are hair based so this one this inner hair mask is essential for making sure the skin processing doesn't go on the hair and the hair processing doesn't go on the skin when we kick into the main video you'll see all of these in action so we have one here for the main hair so these are just filled new layers with white selection filled in created using either the pen tool or lasso or refine edge tools to create these selection layers so we got one for the lips there we got eyes iris pupils overall solid hair inner hair inner hair another one and then a, a hide in the ear mask if you're new to this channel you may not have a clue on how the, those work but as we get into the main techniques you'll see them in action so the main things that we did here were the Marilyn Manson inspired eyes the flesh tunnels we we don't go into the flesh tunnels majorly in depth but um, it is included in the main video and then the processing for the main figure we've got eyelashes that have been cut out from other photos basically stolen and incorporated into this we've got manually drawn eyeliner shapes um, replacing the let's get let's just show you the eyebrow replace so we cloned out the existing eyebrows and then brought in some eyebrows from another model um, because I weren't confident I'm not the greatest digital painter in the world so if I can't draw or paint something I'll just outright steal it that's the glory of photo manipulation you can botch your way through which is great we have lips processing we have the pale skin which is one of the main processes that we cover in this tutorial lips darken and then we have another method of stealing from stock images back hair so I wasn't happy with how the edges of the hair was when I used my refine edge process so I basically stole some hair from another model so now that's been explained the basic construction of the piece let's kick in to the main tutorial here we go so as I said before, the mood board is essential um, for me anyway. And anyone that's starting out in photo manipulation, I urge 
you all to create your own mood boards where necessary. There's a link for our dedicated tutorial in the description below. Now the process here is the preparation work and all this is is uh, my preferred method for cutting out figures. So I create a mask, I fill that on a new selection layer. So path with the pencil, fill with white, put it on its own layer. And then for the hair, I usually use the lasso tool. There's a dedicated tutorial for each one of these techniques for cutting up figures and also um, a video tutorial for working with hair as well on our channel. So check that out if you want to learn these in depth. The creation of the selection layers, we're going forward and doing that for the eyes and the lips. And this one's really important. This is done with the freehand lasso tool. And then you use the refine edge to taper out those edges. You go, okay, once you've got that selection, you make a new layer and then you fill that layer with white. And then you'll be able to load that selection at any point. Um, you'll see in a minute why. Um, so the, the light skin doesn't bleed over into the hair and the dark hair doesn't bleed over into the skin. So this is my go-to method for controlling uh, skin tones, making skin pale or making it alien, whatever the process is needed. I usually use selective color. Again, there's a dedicated tutorial specifically for selective color. So the main premise was to go to the reds, control the tones of the reds, then the yellows, and then the neutrals on the selective color. Now this is where you see the selection layer uh, in action. So with that processing that was done, the selective color, that's all put into a layer group and then a layer mask is added. And with that selection live, I can paint in exactly where I want the skin to be. I, I didn't want that pale effect to be going onto the hair at all. So this is where I find these selection layers to be really handy. I know there are methods that you can do this with alpha channels and whatnot, but over the years, this is just my preferred way. I'm very visual. I like to have the selection layers within the layer stack so I can just access everything I need within the layers dialog box. Again, another selection layer used to control the lips. So with lips, you don't want it to be really clinically sharp that you get from the pencil. So when you do load that selection, you can go select, modify, feather. For the lips here, I used uh, three pixels just so the edges were a bit soft softer than this stark pencil and there you can see transition in action same processes as before as pretty much everything else it's a selective color to control the tones another adjustment layer hue saturation just to take the overall saturation down and then when all of this is being done it's being done within the selection that's loaded for the lips I went back and forth on a few methods for creating the dark lips and I ended up just copying the lips from the model um, with that selection live and then just pasting those lips on top and setting the duplicate to multiply. It was really unglamorous, um, not that futuristic, but it seemed to work well. The most important thing with lips is making sure that those highlights and speculars are active. And one of the issues with many other tutorials is that those details get washed out. They just look like solid black blocks. So the duplicate set to multiply method seemed to work pretty well in this case. It's all experimentation. So the technique that was used for the lips was again used for the hair duplicate the hair and set the hair to multiply and that instantly darkens the hair and retains those highlights as well um, the gothic look requires dark or black hair for the look that i wanted anyway so the same drill that we used for the lips was used for the hair 
So you see more references being pulled in there. What I wanted to do was get those um, kind of eyeliner shapes in. But before we kick into that, I'm going to show you a very quick and dirty technique for removing eyebrows. And that is simply using the patch tool. So the patch tool is accessible via the toolbar at the left. You draw your selection around what you want to remove and then drag it up to an area that you'd like to copy. There's loads of resources out there for explaining the patch tool, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. This is the point where the eyebrows were stolen. As I said before, I didn't have the confidence in drawing these myself, so I just thought, why not just take eyebrows that I thought worked well and incorporate them into the image. The transforming is being done using the free transform tool, command and T, control and T if you're on a Windows. Opacity pulled to about 50% and what I like to do is use the iris and the pupils as a marker for when doing the scaling and then you can bump that back up to 100%. Now you'll notice the tones are different and we deal with that in a moment. So because the eyebrows were dark and the skin was a lighter tone, I just set that to multiply. That leaves the darks and then gets rid of the whites. And then you can also do some levels. So there's levels there with a clipping mask. Alt and click between layers to create a clipping mask. Now this is my go-to for a lot of blending these days. And this is the blend if function. And you access this by right clicking on a layer go and blend in options and then the way that you move these markers is you hold down alt and you grab one of the sliders and then experiment bringing things backwards and forwards to control the way that the layer interacts with the layer above so you can selectively control the mid-tones the darks and the lights now once i had a slightly better blend and transition just a bog standard layer mask with a soft edge brush to remove the excess. Black will remove and then white will replace. Now the reason why the blend if function is really good is because it will allow the pores and the skin details from underneath to kind of come through. Otherwise it's just a, a flat layer with its old texture. I wanted where the highlights were on the original model to come through and blend if really helps with doing that. Perfect. Okay, so we got onto the point now where the um, eyeliner's being created. This is simply a new layer using the pencil, drawing out the shapes and then filling those shapes with black. And what you can do is experiment with blend modes. So I tried out overlay and if the pen tool is too sharp and clinical looking, you can just filter, Gaussian blur that. So that'll be filter, Gaussian blur, and then select something small, like, um, like one to 1 1.5 pixels. So eyelashes, I had no idea how I was going to create these fancy, I wanted big exaggerated eyelashes on my piece. Um, I don't think I had the skill set to do that, so I simply got an image that I liked from Adobe Stock, created a path around it, copied the eyelashes, and then literally moved them in place, transformed them using free transform. The shortcut is Command and T, and then literally position it in place. I don't even think I changed the layer blend mode or anything. I just wanted the existing eyelashes to be uh, exaggerated. So we're moving on to eyeshadow now. This is a very quick and dirty technique. You create a new layer, you select a very dark tone, so you don't want pure black, you want black with a touch of another coloring. So in this instance, I chose um, the blackest, blackest purple, put the layer mode to soft light, using the um, selection layers that are created at the beginning of the project I can control where this is being applied so I obviously didn't want the eyeshadow to go onto the eyeballs so uh, use that selection layer select inverse and then paint on to soft light layers 
using these very dark purple tones. Now the good thing about using this method you know, with the soft light is that it allows the, the pores and the skin details to come through. One of the biggest problems with makeup tutorials is that they wash out the details below and, and to have it looking realistic, you really need to have those pores and details coming in. So I wasn't too happy with the edges of the hair on this demo piece. So I got uh, a model with dark hair that was on a white background. Uh, so uh, dark on a white background, you can use a simple command, change the layer mode to multiply, and that will get rid of the whites and leave the darks. The flesh tunnels here, this isn't the main part of the tutorial, but I thought I'd include it anyway. The transparency and the illusion is created by using layer masks and layer groups. So all the flesh tunnel action was happening inside of a layer group and then the layer mask was used to control the transparencies because you'd be able to see through the flesh tunnels. And for the ears, I literally copied and pasted the ears and transformed them because I didn't have the confidence to paint the earlobes myself. The process used for the eyeballs is my signature evil undead eyes technique. So that was used there, um, a separate video for that one. And that's a wrap guys. I really appreciate you tuning in today. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. We're a brand new channel, so we're really grateful for all the support and love shown so far. Lots more crazy tutorials rolling in from me and the team Monday to Friday. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Big thanks PM crew. I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.